Welcome to Breathe California TV. Breathe California is the lung health organization for the state of California. We have chapters throughout the state. Um, today, we're going to try to help you understand a ballot measure that we voted on, but um, there is a little confusion about what it means. And fortunately, we have uh, Dr. Tanya Payapilli who's gonna join us after this public service announcement. And you will understand everything when we're all done. So stay with us. The different therapeutic methods that we can help our um, very low socioeconomic status um, clients who have no alternatives, no, no anything, and they, they're still about 15 different resources we got out of this that if you have no resources, no service connection, you can still get aid. That they are connected, one encourages the other, and that the process of change from backing off from the tobacco is the same as backing off from any other addictive drug. Everyone can benefit from this training that we just were offered today. I would not take it back. Welcome back. This is Breathe California TV. Each week, we do a, an environmental topic oriented towards protecting your lungs. Uh, that may mean from smoking or air pollution, or um, while it's a form of air pollution, we've been getting a lot of wood smoke from forest fires. Um, all of those are things that can impact your lungs. Um, Tanya would love to have you come work for her. She um, needs volunteers at the uh, San Jose office of Breathe California. If you can join us, it's 408-998-5865 or um, lungsrus.org, both of which appear under Tanya's name on the program. So um, Tanya, um, Thank you for coming back to the show again. Um, I guess we need to open with a little explanation of what we were voting on with Prop 31, which um, passed, and that alone is kind of confusing. But uh, why don't you give us an overview? Sure. Um, so the November 2022 election uh, put Proposition 31 before California voters. It was a ballot measure on the SB 793 law that was enacted in August, 2020, prohibiting the sale of certain flavored tobacco products. Uh, it overwhelmingly passed, which will result in SB 793 going into effect um, once the results have been certified. And is, so, uh, at, as of this point, um, it will take effect the fifth day after the Secretary of State certifies the election results. And um, that's supposed to be by December 21st. That's the latest date, December 21st of 2022. So just a little explanation. Um, I perhaps naively thought it was mostly oriented towards vaping and uh, flavored cigarettes um, the way you described it, does it apply to all of those products so it can't be sold to adults? Yes. So, so the SB 793, it sets a statewide floor uh, prohibiting uh, certain flavored tobacco product sales by anyone selling tobacco products from a retail location or a vending machine in the state of California. Um, it does cover a broad range of tobacco products, including menthol cigarettes, chewing tobacco, uh, snuff, little cigars, e-cigars, and roll your own tobacco. Um, the only things that it does not um, cover and things that can still be sold is the flavored hookah and shisha. Um, and uh, it must be sold by a licensed uh, retailer, tobacco retailer, hookah licensed uh, reta retailer that limits the entry to those um, age 21 and over, uh, but it does not apply to electronic hookah products. 
And it also, um, so you can still sell flavored pipe tobacco and flavored premium cigars. Um, the, the cigars must be um, handmade and it has a tobacco leaf wrapper. So it has a wholesome price of um, no less than $12. Um, not, it does not have a filter, a tip, or like a non-tobacco mouthpiece. So those are the only three products that can still be sold. So, um, and does any of this prohibition apply to cannabis or cannabis products? No, right now it's, uh, this one is exclusively for tobacco. So, um, Perhaps um, it's worth me elaborating and acting like a I'm a lawyer, which I am, and Tanya is much more credible as a doctor. But um, California law says that if you don't like something the legislature passed that be, was going to become law, you can referend it, meaning you can collect signatures. And um, in this case, the tobacco industry use that as a way to sell these products for two more years than they could have if the law had gone into place. Uh, anything more you want to say about Prop 31? Um, yeah, to piggyback a little bit on what you said about who funded the ballot measure effort, it was, um, so the top funders, um, so it's required, this is required to be disclosed by the state law. Um, so the companies RJ Reynolds, Philip Morris and ITG Brands, they were the top funders. The California companies, um, they have a history of running ballot measure efforts against new laws that, um, and then they oppose it. This is mainly to buy some time because as I said, this was in 2020, the SB 793 went into, um, I was enacted, but, um, they bought like two years of time and, um, you know, they did not fight back as much at this point before the elections. So this is something that, um, you know, the, um, everybody foresaw uh, before uh, SB 793 will go into effect in the elections in November uh, 2022. So um, do you want to comment on... Um what the impact on their health is of the continuing to be legal tobacco products. Um, it might be easy to think that they only ban the bad ones. Um, would that be correct? Um, so, so the thing is we had been seeing more and more flavored products sprouting here in California. And what I think is the voters realized how impactful these flavored products are because kids perceive them as harmless. Uh, but there are massive doses of nicotine behind these clouds of vapor. Um, and it can impact your brain development, especially when you're before the age of 25. So kids have been using and getting addicted and it, it even causes um, you know, their loss of impulse control increases anxiety, mood disorders. Um, so all of this had been um, slowly happening and we had the, uh, the vaping epidemic a couple of years ago or 2018 to be precise. And we had a lot of kids around the nation that uh, were you know, dropping um, uh, into the ER because of lung disorders. And we did not know what the problem was at the time. And so here we are now, and with this wonderful, overwhelmingly passed proposition uh, that we can now stop flavored tobacco uh, being out in the market so that in the first place, people are not able to try it or know what, what these are. So uh, there's a lot of other side effects of cigarettes that maybe it's worth our while to talk about. Earlier this year, I joined a beach cleanup event at um, the boardwalk in Santa Cruz and uh, we were out picking up trash and the dominant trash we picked up was cigarette filters. Um, by far the largest number of things and um, 
it's interesting that that's just one of the results of smoking is that that stuff's undesirable, um, both because it's ugly and mess messes up people's experience, but also it's killing um, seagulls and anything that happens to be on the beach that thinks it's a food. Um, one of the things that I think you and I've talked about before is um, any cigarette smoke can have a secondhand smoke effect. Can you explain what that is? Yes. Um, so we now have secondhand smoke and a secondhand vape, which is actually aerosol. So what vape leaves when you vape is an aerosol, which still contains all the chemicals that are used to make that product. Um, so when a, someone smokes and you know, you're standing close to that person, you inhale those same chemicals as the person who is vaping or smoking, um, which is dangerous to your health, your lungs, your brain. Um, or if you have a kid who is inhaling at that time, it's dangerous for that kid as well. Um, so there, then there is the third hand smoke and vape, which um, goes and sits on walls. Um, if you if you um, live in a house and you you know vape or smoke, all of those chemicals are going to settle on those walls and it, it's there forever until you like sometimes even after renovating you um, feel the effect of that tobacco product in the house. So it's interesting you brought that up. My parents bought a, a potential retirement home. And um, my dad and I loaded I and my brother into a car and we went to try to renovate this place. And you could see how bad tobacco smoke was because when we took the pictures off the wall, we discovered the wallpaper was a solid white when it had been um, about halfway between your sweater and white you know, a very deep brownish beige uh, color. And um, we still could smell it even though the house hadn't been occupied for two years. So some of the areas that um, we've been working on and you've been working on have been to protect against secondhand smoke. Uh, did San Jose pass an apartment ordinance against secondhand smoke? No. So they were working. The city council was working um, on passing something earlier this year in February or January, um, but it excluded cannabis. So we actually have a law right now that you cannot smoke within 25 feet of an opening, which means a window, a door, like a patio, um, so you're, you're not supposed to be smoking or vaping um, in an area and the, because that is going to pass into the next apartment, right? Uh, now, if you exclude um, cannabis, we have a lot of people who call us and complain about this issue or try to understand what they can do to protect their own health or their mm -hmm. child's health. When someone says that, oh, I did not do tobacco, but I did cannabis, what can you say? So you're actually making a good law that's actually working right now uh, by excluding cannabis. It's not going to work. It's not, you cannot enforce it. The city is going to have a hard time. And we were afraid that this is going to cause more problems um, because people would be allowed to smoke or vape cannabis and not tobacco. So, so this, this was dropped by the city council um, earlier this year. And now we have to do a lot of education again um, about the ill effects or hazards of smoking or secondhand smoke. It does include both cannabis and tobacco. So Tanya and I will be back in about 30 seconds. We're gonna do a quick public service announcement. Stay tuned. My name is Rene Montez. I've been using the CPAP machine, I would guess, uh, 10 years. I, I got so accustomed to it, I don't uh, go anywhere without it. I take it with me everywhere. 
from the moment I put it on, um, I thought it was the greatest thing because the breathing was a lot easier. And um, I, after using it for a couple nights, I felt uh, a lot of energy. Breathe California is fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. I'm talking to you with uh, Tanya uh, Payapilli, who's the deputy director of Breathe California. Um, we were talking about secondhand smoke and cannabis. Um, Campbell also watches this TV show. Do you know if they passed a secondhand ordinance? Right now, um, a lot of the cities are still having that momentum and working, the county is working on multi-unit housing ordinances. Santa Clara City has passed it. Campbell's still in the works. But right now they were focusing on their flavored tobacco and a lot of the cities wanted to wait for the state to pass the flavored tobacco uh, law, the SB 793. So I think everybody had been focused on that, but now I feel like they're going to come back into the momentum and start working on secondhand smoke, multi-unit housing ordinance. So hopefully this program also uh impacts the thinking of local leaders in Santa Clara County, which um, we added to our audience around January 1st. Um, so just to expand on all of that, um, you got complaints about cannabis. Do I dare ask you to compare cannabis smoke and uh, tobacco smoke from a health perspective? Both are smoke. So, you know, smoke is smoke. You cannot, you're still burning something at the end of a device or a um, physical cigarette, you know, either ways, it is still smoke. It is still burning that chemical and it uh, causes a lot of carcinogens to come out of it. Um, not only into your own lungs, if you're doing, if you are having that addiction of smoking or vaping, but also causing the problem to your neighbor. Um, so, I, I feel like by comparing it, it's not going to be any effective because smoke is smoke and it's still as bad, uh, whether it's cannabis or tobacco. Well, let's expand on the smoke is smoke argument. Uh, in recent days, the Bay Area Air Quality Management District had banned fireplaces because um, smoke is so bad from them during the... Um, winter time that we are having health problems. And it also applies to um, wood smoke from our forest fires. So um, I don't know about you, but I feel like the forest fires have added a whole dimension to our breathing problems. It's pretty significant. Um, in the same vein, uh, we ought to give San Jose credit, I don't know, five years ago, they banned secondhand smoke, which is very persistent. I think everybody caught that from you, from um, parks, um, because it was impacting kids. Um, so that just tells you how bad things are. So talk a little bit about uh, what you do for Breathe California. I put in a plug earlier for volunteers. Um, tell us a little about what they might be put to work doing. Sure. Um, so I, I actually, I'm the project director of a, the California Tobacco Control Program grant and the deputy executive director here at Breathe. Um, as far as the, the grant, um, this is funded by the California Public Health Department at the state. And um, we, we have four main objectives that we are working on. One of them is to promote smoke-free outdoor dining areas. Um, right now, Santa Clara County is doing pretty good, um, except for uh, the city of Gilroy uh, that still needs to work on their smoke-free outdoor dining area. Um, and the second objective is to provide cessation services, which means tobacco cessation to agencies like mental and behavioral health agencies, social service agencies, and those who would like to implement um, a smoke-free program or cessation program in their agency. We would train their um, 
you know, staff to become facilitators to provide cessation. The third objective we're working on is the flavored tobacco um, ordinances that um, yeah, that's uh, that was a lot of work, and we started this grant in 2020, July 2020. Um, so uh, the last objective we have is the 100% smoke-free campuses. And currently we're working um, in helping with implementation of 100% tobacco-free campus at San Mateo Community College District. We're also working now at Evergreen and uh, West Valley Colleges. So uh, these are the four objectives that I mainly work on and what um, you know, our volunteers and interns um, are, they help us with a lot of activities that go into these objectives. For example, they would um, attend city council meetings for us and provide uh, public testimonials on what they have seen personally with sec secondhand smoke or vape problems in their apartments or on their campuses where they study and they they can write um, you know, letters to the editor. Uh, they go out and help collect surveys. So we train them to do these activities so they are well equipped and ready to go out there and speak as a part of Breathe California. Um, so um, there, and there are like so many other things that um, our interns and volunteers can help with. And uh, they also, um, represent us at health fairs, which means they uh, go out and table at events, talk about our services, what we do, um, how the history about Breathe California and how we started off with fighting tuberculosis and then moved on to promote lung health in all forms after that. So I've done about 10 health fairs over um, time and I just want, people that might volunteer to know it's pretty easy. Breathe California has brochures on um, 10 to 13 different lung problems. Uh, have you guys done one in the last few years on COVID for health fairs? We take our information to all the health fairs, including information on COVID and wildfires, um, asthma, senior health, COPD, um, and this last month, we had a lot of health fairs because um, most of the colleges requested information on Great American Smokeout. It was the Thursday before Thanksgiving, uh, and we had to go to five colleges, and it, it was an honor to be at these places because we were promoting and motivating people to quit vaping and smoking. And what we saw was a lot of students they, they're not shy. They want to get that help because they understand this is an addiction and they need to seek that uh, help. Um, and we were able to even give them quit kits at that time. So um, one of the things just to encourage people to go to Breathe California's health fairs is I would guess there must be about 10 languages that these brochures are printed in so that the most anything that is commonly used in Santa Clara County, you will have a description of, of what the ailment happens to be and how to um, address it. Um, so way back in, I want to say 1986, we passed a state law prohibiting smoking in um, restaurants and most bars. Um, back when it was first passed, I went to a couple of small rural counties where they, uh, smoking in bars was quite common. And when I called the county health departments, they say, we don't have enough uh, enforcement per personnel to do anything about it. Um, do you know where that stands? So right now we are um, seeing good enforcement. So you have to file a complaint if you see such issues with secondhand smoke in places where they've already banned uh, smoking in outdoor dining areas or bars. Um, so if you file an official complaint, then the chances of the officer going out to that restaurant and taking a look at what the problem is, is high. 
Um, and right now we have sometimes, sometimes we go out to places and we see this. And so we can, uh, you know, call the officer or make a complaint online. Um, and, you know, chances are that it would be enforced sooner. But if you don't uh, file a complaint, you know, then there's a chance that that kind of gets forgotten. The problem gets forgotten. So if there is any issue with secondhand uh, smoke in outdoor dining areas, you can call Breathe California and we can actually walk you through that process. Um, and we are also in touch with the enforcement officers because we provide help um, to like go to retail stores and see if they're still selling flavored tobacco products or in the cities that have already banned it. So you would recommend that approach to our audience wherever they happen to be to, when they run into a smoking issue? Mm -hmm. Yes, and we also have our secondhand smoke helpline um, that they can look at. And our website has online a form that they can fill out and it will come to us and we can give them a call back and see what the problem is. So uh, last month I chaired the annual um, fundraising walk of Breathe California at Hellier Park in San Jose. Uh, does Breathe California have any more um, events coming up that you want to let people know about? We will have events coming up the same like next year. So right now we just finished a lot of tabling events like uh, for the Great American Smoke Out. Um, and then we are planning for some press events in January. Um, followed by our, you know, all Earth Day events that we will table at in April. And then finally, we'll also have our walk next October. Well, Tanya, Tanya, we really appreciate you and the work that Breathe California does and um, hope people will donate or participate on those. You've been watching Breathe California TV. We're on... Um, every Monday night in San Jose and Campbell at seven, channel 15. Our guest, uh, Tanya, we appreciate your assistance and uh, sure we'll see you again in the next year. Thank you, Terry, we'll see you soon. So um, come see us every uh, week. We look forward to um, enlighten you more on ways to uh, protect your health.